guys. What's up? Um, it's just this world is just so full of lies. It's hard to find people to trust, you know, let alone believe. Because, like, you might trust someone, but they're an idiot. And then you might believe someone else, but, you know, they kind of have questionable doctrines or whatever. Like, I'm the most questionable guy ever. Because I was a New Ager, then turned Christian, whatever you want to call that. But the Christian that says that, you know, Christmas is evil and Easter is pagan. So there's a small minority of those kind of Christians. But then I'm also a Christian who says astrology is real because that's what Judges 5.20 says. You know, the stars in their courses fought against Commander Sisera. That's, that's Old Testament stuff. Okay, and so I'm even more minority Christian in that regard. And then go a step further and say, you know, Yahweh is Satan. Okay, so that, that's going to be something else entirely. It's just getting more and more fringe like I'm totally a fringe Christian you know I think there's nothing you can do to save to, to stop the end times it's part of prophecy there's no great revival um, and there's there's gonna be a conspiracy involving Jesus like this here Revelation 13 18 says and his number is 666 now this in Greek keo keho arthmos arithmos like arithmetic number keho arithmos afto you know ki zeta whatever i can't say that and i don't know how to say that numerically but that adds up to 2368 which is jesus christ so a lot of <clears throat> a lot of fringe other fringe christians think oh that's that means jesus is the devil like that that dude the real macabre the black dude he talks about everything is evil and the bible is just made up and He's got some really good points, but he's, he's skipping a step that I go through. <clears throat> Jesus isn't the devil, obviously. But Jesus' worship is, is satanic, okay? You can't worship a messiah. You can only worship God, okay? And the earliest manuscripts we have, the book of Mark, do not attribute a deity um, to to Jesus, he's he's not God God like he is later in the older texts like the Book of John. The Book of John, that's where it says me and my Father are one. That's where he says you know he is God. But again, if that was the case, why didn't the very first gospel ever written, Mark, mention that? They just didn't want to reveal that truth until the fourth gospel. Okay, so Jesus says. Um, to sit in my right hand and in my left is not mine to give. He later says, my father which gave them me is greater than all. Um, he, he later says, there is none that is good but God. Why callest thou me good? There's none good but God. Okay, so he's, he's kind of warning us to not worship him. And yet, that's all we do. We have the Jesus statue or we have a Mary statue with Jesus. But what do we not have a statue of ever? Because it wouldn't make sense. Is the Father. We don't have a statue of God. We just have like the Michelangelo painting of Adam and God touching. You know, the white old man with hair. The, the gray, gray bearded white old guy. But you don't see that in churches. They don't, not, not because it's ridiculous in the first place to attribute him to a, a human, a gender or a skin color. But because we're, they're, they're trying to distract you away from the Father. What did Jesus say to do? He said, do the Lord's prayer. He said, our Father which art in heaven. Jesus didn't pray to Jesus. I say that a lot, but a lot of people don't seem to understand. And, and part of this, this whole gematria thing, says he who has wisdom, you know, calculate the number of the beast. And, and it's 666, okay? Well, the wisdom is that the passage itself adds up to 2368. So... Either it's it's Satan trying to be God, like he always does, <clears throat> like in half the Old Testament is Yahweh, or it's saying that worshiping Jesus instead of the Father who sent Jesus is also satanic and, and wrong. You know, you can do things in Jesus' name, but Jesus didn't create Jesus. The Father created him. Jesus was born in, you know, negative 3 AD or whatever. 
and then died at the age of 33. But, but then you say, well, John says the word was with God. And yeah, his spirit was potentially, but Jesus is the whole point of Jesus is that God was made manifest in the flesh. Okay. Or, you know, God, he had a pure messenger finally um, in the flesh. And that's obviously Jesus. But worshiping him too much is where we get um, a little deceived. Okay. I'm just going to say it like, because cause to be honest, like nowadays, I just, I, I, everything is topsy turvy. And I'm the one who seems like I'm turning it upside down. Whereas actually I'm putting it right side up again. It's, it's been upside down for 2,000 years. And now anyone who claims to change everything or, or you know, uh, give a new interpretation, they're the ones who get blamed for turning Christianity on its head. Well, when you started, you know, making up stuff like Santa Claus flying in the sky with some reindeer and he has some magical elves help him out, it's just the most unbiblical garbage ever. And you know why? Because kids like it. Are you a kid? Are you going to stay a kid? Are you going to keep teaching that bunnies lay eggs, even though they're mammals, and give natural birth, let alone chocolate eggs? <laughs> it's just, I'm not the one who's turned Christian, Christianity upside down. I'm turning it right side up. Okay, Jesus specifically came to tell us who the true God was. He told the Jews, you're of your father, the devil. And in Matthew 6, he negates, or Matthew 5, he disagrees with his own daddy, Jehovah, six times. Okay? Six times. Let's just go to it. KJV. Even though that's not the best one, um, of course, because we need the Hebrew and the Greek. But look. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yada, yada, yada. When you go pray, don't do what the hypocrites do and pray in the, standing in the synagogues in the corners, but pray in your closet because since God's God's real, so he knows everything. You know, he knows if you're lying. God's not a dumbass. He knows if you're being real or not. Don't do vain repetitions. Churches say do Hail Mary 20 times and then you're good. And then he says, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He doesn't say Jesus, which is here right now, worship me even though I'll be dead at the age of 33 and he will I'll, in spirit will be in the right hand of God how can he be God if he's going to be in the right hand of God when he passes or ascends okay uh, let's see let's see let's see uh, can't serve two masters that's one of the main issues here too we can't serve two masters so if Jesus is preaching something and everything he says is from the Father then why would Jesus disagree with the Father? And why would the Father do those atrocious things in Deuteronomy 28 and Numbers 31 if that's the real loving God of Jesus? Because it's Satan, okay? Sorry, I guess it was, it was Matthew 5. <laughs> I was right the first time. Uh, let's see. All right. um, think not that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets, not come to destroy but fulfill. And this is really super confusing because... People think the law is all the crazy stuff in Leviticus or, or like what Jews eventually turned into the Talmud. Okay, it's, it's Talmud, it's not Torah. But again, in the Torah, the Old Testament, whatever, the first five books, or even the whole Tanakh, people think the law is all this crazy stuff. Okay, but it's actually just Yahweh being an oppressor to make you fear God when it was actually just him being disguised as an angel of light. Because that's... Satan's number one goal is to pretend to be God and take all of his righteousness. And Jesus says, you've heard it been said of them by old time, thou shalt not kill. And whoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Okay? So, obviously murder is wrong, but Jesus is taking it a spiritual step. It's like, well, you, you, can't, you can't have wrath towards your brother without a cause. And a lot of people think Christians always have to be happy and, you know, just, you know, be walked over, basically. Um, but no, you got to be firm in your faith, okay? Because there's so many people 
who seem nice or charismatic or, you know, bright lights and sounds who are just totally full of um, self-love and pride and um, not the truth. Because the truth says, you know, deny yourself. Jesus says, deny yourself, then you can be my disciple. Okay? The truth is, sell all that you have, then you can be my disciple. People praying for money go against that, and it's just this whole deception of the church. And then uh, Jesus says, you've heard it been, been said of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. He's talking about the freaking Ten Commandments. Why is Jesus saying it like that? He said, well, you've heard it was said of them by old time. Dude, you're talking about your dad's Ten Commandments. Why would he phrase it like that? Okay. Ouch, you, you tell me. You tell me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yada, yada, yada. You've heard it been said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say, resist not evil. And whoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Yahweh said, eye for an eye. Why is Jesus disagreeing with his dad when later on he calls him perfect the perfect father well he's perfect except for when he killed kids in numbers 31 and deuteronomy 22 or 28 it, it's a it's a big conspiracy here and i'm not trying to turn anything on its head i'm trying to figure out the, the puzzle the bible is a riddle it's a puzzle for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see and if you're going to just go with your traditions your whole life, that's basically, you know, like walking off a cliff. Well, they all, they all did it, and they can't all be damned. Really? Jesus said narrow is the way. And you're saying the whole world is right because it's the whole world? Narrow is the way. I'm not saying, and, and then we got to get into this. Uh, narrow is the way to be raptured from the new world order coming. Not, I mean, because Jesus says... Um, in uh, Luke, uh, dang, which one is it? Um, that ye are worthy to escape what's coming. Luke twenty one thirty six. Watch therefore and pray always that ye may be worthy. Here we go. Watch and pray. What, Pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming and to stand before the Son of Man. So, what is he implying? What's coming? And why should we pray to escape it? And how is that not a rapture verse? Okay? So Jesus is saying there's a chance. If you don't get raptured, well, you'll have to test your faith and go to the guillotines. Mark of the beast or guillotines? Death is better than the mark of the beast. I'll let you know that much. And then we'll stick with Luke 11.27. Another false doctrine, Mary worship. But what does Luke eleven twenty seven say specifically? And and we're going to get into how the KJV is wrong actually in a second here. It says it came to pass as he spake these things, Jesus, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said to Jesus, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But Jesus said, Nay. The KJV says yea. Jesus says nay in the Greek says nay rather blessed are they that hear the word of god and keep it the woman literally tried to say blessed is your mom let's pray to her a little bit huh jesus is like no actually blessed is the word of god and those who can hear it not just with your ears with your soul okay there's actually going to be a mary worship debate on jp uncut tonight i might make an appearance i don't know because 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 you know religious people they're closed-minded Okay, so I'm surprised they're even going to show up for this type of debate because there's no biblical evidence for Mary's ascension, Mary's this, Mary's that. Jesus didn't even call Mary his mom. He says woman. He says he called his mom woman. Okay. All right. He obviously came from her womb, but, you know, it was an immaculate conception. Anyway, so... There's just a, a, a plethora of lies that I've talked about many times that just that are clearly biblically um, refuted, but people still do it. But that's that's a whole other thing. That's for the easy debaters. My challenge, my task, is to show how you know people say, well, how can how can God lie to us? Well, 
2 Thessalonians 2.11 says, For this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's what it says. God will lie to you to test your faith. It's kind of like a cop. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to say this, and if you don't get it, then you were wrong in the, in the first place. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness. They loved Christmas. They loved the jolly time of year where kids used to be sacrificed a thousand years ago. I mean, Saturnalia was a thing before Jesus was even here. Odin flying in the skies and making you have Christmas lights, lights on your house, that was before Jesus too. He had made you have lights on your house so he, he could find his way down. Mistletoe's been here before that. The Yule log is clearly pagan. The Christmas tree, it, it's the Semiramis Tammuz worship. And Tammuz had Nimrod. You know, it's, it's all fake. And it's all traditions just passed down from the pagans. To just and then we slowly incorporated it into our culture and we call it Christian the next day. Okay? And, and you know, Revelation is a scary one <clears throat> because I'm starting to think that that is potentially Satan again pretending to be God. I'm not saying the prophecies won't come true. I'm just saying who's doing all this evil at the end? Jesus allows, or God allows evil if you fail the test because you have pleasure in unrighteousness God sends a strong delusion that you believe a lie and that's this whole fake Christianity thing we're doing right now so Revelation um, was it 22 16 or something yeah Jesus says he's the morning star right here who else said that Lucifer in Isaiah 14 yeah I'm the bride and Oh, son of, son of the morning, Lucifer, son of the morning, the bright morning star. So why is, so is it Lucifer pretending to be the morning star, which Jesus really is? Or is Lucifer the morning star? And he's just saying Jesus is right here because he's pretending to be Jesus. Okay, what about the description of all the, the jewelry, the sapphire and sardis? You know, uh, that's, that's a description of Lucifer, but it's used for God in Revelation. It's the same exact substances, the, the, uh, all, all the different things I did in my previous video, but I can't remember now. And of course, we're going to go the, to the, the big one right here, Revelation 13. The beast I saw was like unto a leopard, has the feet of a bear, the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power. Okay, now we can all, all, already look at the astrotheology of this. You look directly up. That's Draco, the dragon. You look next to it, it's Ursa Major, the bear. Next to that is Leo Minor, which is a leopard, like a cat. And then next to that is Leo, the lion. It's all astrotheological. The heavens declare the glory of God, as uh, Psalm 19 says. So if the beast is like a, a lion, a leopard, and a bear, in Revelation 13, why is God a lion, a leopard, and the bear in Hosea 13. Okay. I am the Lord, thy God, from the land of Egypt. There is no Savior besides me, even though people want to say Jesus saves. Um, but it says, Yahweh says, I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard, by the way, will I observe them. I'll meet them as a bear that's bereaved of her whelp, whelps. Okay. Lion, leopard, and the bear. Hosea 13 says, God's that. Revelation 13 says the beast is that. These are all clues, dude. Okay? Okay? And if we get into the whole math part of it, when God first gives his name, in Exodus 3.14, actually, Exodus 3.1415, does that number ring a bell? It's pi. The first time God says his name is I am that I am. Okay? Yahuwah, Yoah, or something in Hebrew like that. Okay? And it's Exodus 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. Because as we know, Genesis 1, 1, the letters times the number of... The product of the letters times the number of the letters 
divided by the product of the words time to, times the number of the words is 3.1415. It's like pi to the ninth digit or something. So God is hiding these codes, saying he's eternal. He knows the perfect shape and how to calculate it, the perfect circle. That's why the band's called that, the perfect circle, because they know this kind of stuff. And the first time he gives his official title, I am that I am, is Exodus 3.1415. So pi is everywhere, and E is everywhere, 2.718. That's John, John 1.1. 1, 1. So all, all these gematria codes are there to confirm that it's divine, but Christians think that's occultish. <laughs> Even though there's like hundreds of numbers in the Bible, there's 144,000 elect, there's 666, the, the, the number of a man. We, we need to look, there's a book called the Book of Numbers, and y'all don't want to look at that. Say, well, they just did the codes later. No, it was, the gematria was a thing before the Bible was written. In Hebrew, Aleph is one, Bet is two, etc. Just like Greek. Alpha is one, beta is two. But then the numbers get different later on in the alphabet. Okay? There, there's just so many things to go over that, I, that I'm just getting tired of it. I'm like, I, it's, it's just... It's, it's not really a creative endeavor for me anymore. It's not killing time for me. It's like freaking me out. It's like curiosity killed the cat because... You do something because you're bored, but then all of a sudden you realize what you're doing is very important and something that no one else could do or want to do or, or want to have on their shoulders. Like I sometimes get scared, like I will go viral and then I'll have like a million comments the next day and I'll just be overwhelmed. I don't want fame, I just want truth. And if truth, and if, you know, if God destines me to, to be a, a bigger thing, then that'll be that. And I'll just, I'll just have to get rid of anxiety and just be like, yeah, it's for the better. You're famous for a good, a good reason, not a bad reason, because that's a thing too. If you're famous for the wrong reason, you'll, you'll feel shame the rest of your life and be known for that or whatever. I want to be known for sticking to my guns and being real. And by being real, that means I can change. You talk to any pastor, they haven't changed their sermon in 10 years. Are you still studying, buddy? Are you still learning? Or are you just reading the same passages and then putting your own judgment into it every time? You know you can trust someone when they've changed their mind. When they say, hey, maybe I was wrong. Because that means you're human. And not only that, you owned up to it. And you step back and say, I don't know everything. That's a good point. Let's continue on. Whereas if pastors think that's weakness, well, well, I just told my whole congregation something else last week that goes against what I got this week, and I got to get the, that's my bread and butter. What's your bread and butter? Being ignorant and lying to your congregation, pretending Christmas isn't pagan, when anyone and their grandma can Google it? Like, how do, how do these pastors sleep at night? For real. Like, you got to be real, or else you're not on God's good list. You're on Santa's naughty list, okay? Um, I'm almost done, y'all, I think. I'm almost done, y'all. AI art. Just type some stuff. And yet, the whole, the whole Starfield thing, like, the city is called New Atlantis. And that's exactly Francis Bacon's last book that he wrote. It was called New Atlantis, talking about the new utopia. Okay, because he was very well read with Plato and the old Atlantis, obviously. But let's talk about the new Atlantis. Okay, Starfield knows about this. There's a character called Albums. And Francis Bacon's title was Viscount St. Albums. Okay. There's a couple other things, too, that are kind of weird in Starfield, but we won't go into all that. You know, and Jesus says, you know, if Jesus really was wasn't God, why didn't he say it? Or if he was God, why didn't he just say it? Let, let's get into something real quick. The word Lord in the Old Testament is not the same as the word Lord in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the word Lord is karios, and the word God is theos, two different things. But in the Old Testament, 
the word for Lord um, is Elohim, I believe. And the word for God is, you know, uh, Yahweh or whatever. Yahweh is used like 6,800 times. Some say 6,832, which is an anagram for Jesus Christ. So, again, I'm not saying every time Yahweh's name is used, that's the evil Yahweh. Because we saw in Isaiah 1, he's good for one second. But then Isaiah 13, he's doing some crazy evil stuff the next second. So, again, it's not just in the name. It's in the fruits. It's in what he's actually doing. It, it, anyway, so, so Jesus doesn't say, Jesus doesn't say, or sorry, Jesus doesn't say more than he does say. Okay, meaning that he never corrects the Jews when they claim that he thinks he's God. He just stays silent. He said, well, I'm not God, but you can continue to think that. He just remains quiet. And he never straight out says Jehovah was Satan in disguise. He just remains quiet, except for the part where he said, you're of your father the devil. But let's ignore that really quick. It's not just that the Jews misinterpreted Jesus' as dad. It's that they were following a false, satanic, reptilian force. Okay? And I'll say it again, <laughs> all of the Egyptian plagues could easily have been explained with UFOs and science, not miracles, okay? They can darken the sun by putting the UFO over the sun at the exact position where it would darken that space. They can send flies and frogs and locusts. They have chemistry labs in their UFOs. They can just drop them off. They can part a Red Sea with gravitation gravitational technology easy okay they can make all the water turn to blood by putting one little drop of something in there in the river Nile and then everything's just blood and they can make it rain blood easy this is science this isn't miracles okay it, so so again who were the Jews following and where was the real God amidst all that he couldn't stop these reptilian forces <laughs> he couldn't when the Nephilim mated with men and women, they never disappeared. They're still here. Maybe they're on the hollow moon right now, affecting our pineal glands. Because as we all know, man and woman was created in Genesis 1.27, but then Eve shows up all of a sudden in Genesis 2.24. A full chapter later, God creates Eve out of Adam's rib, a.k.a. the reptilians took Adam's DNA not just a rib bone, but some part of his DNA, and create a hybrid offspring named Eve. Okay? And that's the reptilian that's in our blood right now from day one. We could, we're not pure human, y'all. We have that reptilian part in our brain. You know, it's still there. And I believe that's part of that. And I believe that the apple that started the fall of mankind, that basically crushed our pineal gland so we're not one with God anymore, is the moon. Okay? Eve is part of the reptilian invasion who brought the moon, which is hollow. And there's many cultures who say they, there was a time before there was a moon. So now we got the sci-fi stuff coming in with the theology. I, feel, I mean, you know, how could I not love Philip K. Dick books? You know, he's just purely, what's the future and what does God have to do with the future? No, no sci-fi author goes into theology as much as Philip K. Dick. Then again, he believes he's a reincarnated Gnostic prophet telling us the truth after all these years before the end times, which of course I can't get enough of. But yeah, what, what's going on? And how, how, what's the easiest way for me to explain it? Okay. And, and my, my BS meter is just off the, off the charts. It's, all, it's virtually impossible for, for you to lie to me. And not only that, I can guess when you're a Capricorn or not. Like I was watching uh, the Pope's Exorcist the other day. Um, and I just told my friend, I was like, this kid, he's the exercised kid, just as an actor, I said, this kid's a Capricorn. He's too comfortable being dark and twisted and weird. And come to find out, he was born January 1st, 2011. More proof. I was watching a King James Only debate. And this guy, Kenneth Barker, He's the main editor for the NIV, the worst Bible ever. And at the end of his closing, he's saying, well, we're all Christians and it doesn't really change anything. That's exactly what a liar would say. Well, there's something, there's some, some things are wrong, but mostly it's okay. No, if there's one thing wrong, 
Why are you doing that to us? <laughs> Why lie and just say, well, we're all in the same boat? No, we're not. You don't preach the same doctrine. The NIV does not preach the same doctrine. And I'm not a KJV onlyist, obviously. The KJV debunks itself when the apostles quote the Septuagint Old Testament 50 times over the Hebrew Masoretic text that the KJV itself has. There's just layers of li layers of lies. Okay, lie upon lie upon lie, making it so confusing that people don't even want to start, let alone know where to start. And that's where I come in. I say, hey, well, look at this one little thing. And if that gets you, let me show you a hundred more, okay? Because I have a hundred videos on Gematria. I have 30 videos on Yahweh is Satan. I have 40 videos on Shakespeare is, is Francis Bacon, the founder of Freemasonry, and the plays hide Masonic truths that they're not going to tell us about because they're Masons. They're sworn to secrecy or you die. You think their curiosity of letting the truth out like I like to do is worth dying over? Well, I'm not a Mason, so I don't have to follow their rules. And that's another thing. <laughs> uh, here, here. I say, my struggle is that I'm fascinated by the secrets of the universe, and apparently only satanic Freemasons have that, instead of the ignorant Christians on every street corner who I'm supposed to be siding with. Okay? It's, 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 it's just a cluster F. And, and people just turn the channel off Immediately, if they d disagree with one thing, without any backing, and say, well, Yahweh's Satan and astrology is real. Uh, what? Well, Christmas is pagan, you can Google that. Um, but God sends the conspiracy. The Bible says that. What? God is good, he doesn't lie. If, if God's good, according to your mainstream interpretation, why do you kill kids in Deuteronomy 28 and Numbers 31? How is that Jesus is loving, perfect father? Okay, the clues are there, y'all, staring us in the face, if you have eyes to see. And I got glasses, so. Uh, anyway, I think we're good. Um, got the spiritual glasses. Um, and again, like, just a whole bunch of other synchronicities with my life personally, with my name, with, with the, my birthday, with this and that. It's all tied together, like, it all means something. And guess what? Your life means something too. You just didn't know where to look yet. You're looking at some, some mass or some beads to count, just like they do in Islam. They count beads because that's all from Augustinian paganism. Okay. It's it's just it's pretty deep this conspiracy, y'all. And I don't know. I don't know how many more people I can tell. I don't I don't know how many more videos I can um make to prove it to y'all because y'all aren't going to scroll through my thousand things you're just going to see the last couple weeks for the new people for people who've been following me for 16 years they know i'm not fooling around and i'm genuinely curious about what is reality why are we here what's going on but it takes more than curiosity y'all it takes a brain it takes training and studying to it and and what's what's the key to studying what is it to find something interesting to me, it's interesting, especially when numbers get involved. Oh, God knows pi, and he knows Earth is round, and he knows the diameter of the sun and Saturn. Like, yeah, he made it, but he's also proving to you that he made it by hiding those kinds of numbers in the Bible. Okay, yeah, cool. And so when we kind of tie in the whole reptilian influence with this, it really explains a lot, y'all. Like, I, I, you know... 15 years ago, I, I wouldn't be saying any of this stuff. I'd be shocked if I saw myself 15 years ago now. Like, well, he's a Christian who believes in reptilians. And yeah, I do. I mean, because UFOs are real. That's a fact. So it's no longer fringe to think of aliens anymore, especially biblically. We look at the, the show Ancient Aliens is all about that. Ezekiel's wheels within wheels. The Nephilim, the giants of old, it's all real. We just make movies about it to kind of glamorize it so it seems fake, but it's real. And so, anyway, we're just trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Here, any religion or belief system that denies the brain won't be legit because God wants you to use your brain. Christians want you to turn your brain off and just believe everything they say and then take your money. But, more, but worse, take your soul. 
Even worse is they don't know they're taking your soul. They genuinely think they're doing the right thing. And that's what's scary. The same with the liberals. You know, it's, they, they say it's all about freedom, but they don't know they're taking away rights. The same with Republicans. They, they want to keep Christ in Christmas, but that's a whole other can of worms that we don't want to open right now. It's just, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> so, so in conclusion, um, if, if you're real to yourself, you're going to get, you're going to move forward. But if you're trying to impress someone, you're like with a girlfriend who doesn't like you talking about that, your parents don't like you asking those kind of questions, screw them. Okay? Screw them. If they can't understand all the evidence you've accumulated over your 36 years of living on this earth because they're just too busy with their job or paying their bills, we all have bills. That doesn't mean you don't have to think. After you do the sweat of your brow, then you can be yourself. We all have to give unto Caesar the what is Caesar's. Because guess what? If we were still in the Garden of Eden, it wouldn't be a test. We're in a beast system. Money rules the world. And so does the devil. Now, he loves materialism. He wants you to just keep buying. Never save. Always spend. Always want more. It's just this culture. is just going down the drain. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, as you can tell, I was playing too much Starfield. I'm like 160 hours into that. I just, I love sci-fi. I love flying, you know. love looking at different planets. And I love the uh, procedurally generated planets. I, I didn't walk into a wall until 100 hours into my game. People are like, well, I, you know, it's not infinite, like No Man's Sky. Yeah, but you don't want to wander a planet that long, do you? And I didn't even find a wall until 100 hours in. I wasn't going straight on purpose like these other people. I was genuinely just having a good time running around. That's what video games are. Exploration. Get you out of your butt, out of your small Texas town into something more grand that's not, uh, you know, 2000 bucks for a little room in New York or Tokyo. Okay, you know, that's why we like video games. And yeah... Cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty. I had 700 hours in Cyberpunk, y'all, before I started Phantom Liberty. I was really pissed that they changed the stats and all that. But I do like the Phantom Liberty storyline. Um, and I still have a PS4. So if I really want to play it the old school way, I can just go back to my PS4 and play Cyberpunk. The original way, the, you know, the vanilla, whatever, whatever, how it originally is. And then go to Xbox Series S if I want to do the new stuff because you can't play the new stuff on the old consoles, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I do video games. Been reading. Um, I still didn't finish Don Quixote or Valis. I'm literally in the midway point of both of those. Valis is literally my biography. It's about Philip K. Dick finding hidden Gnostic codes in the, in the Bible that no one else is supposed to know. And you wouldn't know that from the description. It's just some sci-fi book. Yeah, that's because they're suppressing it. Okay. And Don Quixote, of course, was written by Francis Bacon as well. Francis Bacon was not only the leading scientist logician of his time, he was not only Shakespeare, he was not only the founder of modern Freemasonry, and he not only wrote books and books on ciphers, but he also wrote the, the first novel ever, basically. So Don Quixote is the first novel. Before that, it was just kind of stories and tales, you know, King Arthur, whatever. This was the first novel, and it's, and it's funny and serious. It's sarcastic. Anyway, only Francis Bacon could have written it, and that's why he has over 50 similar quotes as Don Quixote, either in his works or the Shakespeare plays. There's 60 quotes. All that glitters isn't gold. You know, all these common sayings that we take for granted, Bacon made it up. And you could tell because Don Quixote, Shakespeare's plays, and all of his writings the same exact time. They're all in the same era. And yes, Bacon knew Spanish, but he wrote Don Quixote in English. You can tell English was the first language Don Quixote was written in because it's retranslated into Spanish. The original text was in English, and it's the Thomas Shelton edition. Whoever that guy is, some other mask, no one knows much about him, just some guy who showed up randomly. <laughs> Even the first words of Don Quixote are basically, I didn't write this book. It, anyway, it's just... The conspiracy upon conspiracy and it's all kind of making sense but it's it's really hard to zoom out and just kind of see the bigger picture but like my birth chart says 
Jupiter and Pisces, just like Frederick Nietzsche, my favorite philosopher, we have Jupiter and Pisces so we can zoom out and see the bigger picture. Imagine that. No wonder my other dumbass friends didn't see that. No wonder my family is, just doesn't get it because they don't have certain birth chart things. And of course, God didn't make their soul that way. Okay, I think I'm done. Peace out.